So the first round of the Promise firmware upgrade for the Mavic 3 is here in advance, with a good deal of new functionalities. In this video I will concentrate on hyperlapses and timelapses, technique that I use a lot, both with drones and with ground-based cameras. I know that a lot of you are time-lapse heroes, and I can't wait to taste this function. So fasten your seatbelts and let's get going. The hyperlapse function has been in the Mavic drone since the Mavic 2 series, but it needed a good deal of adjustments. In particular, the minimum speed of the drone was way too high. Also, the most important mode, waypoints, needed a huge distance of travel to get a 10 second hyperlapse, with the risk of finding the aircraft in a different country. In the Air2S, the hyperlapse mode worked much better, and the settings in the Mavic 3 are very similar, so I will not go too deep into this topic, as I already covered it in depth in my video about hyperlapses with the Air2S. Please refer to it for more details. I will post a link at the end of this one, and in the description below. I've chosen the same place, I hope this will help to compare the results, even though the weather conditions are different. This is not a head-to-head -head shootout between the two models, but shooting in the same location will give you a better idea to see which one is more to your liking. In my opinion, there is not a night and day difference in the quality of photos and hyperlapses with the two drones. They are certainly in the same league, and it's mostly a matter of personal preference. The Mavic 3 has two huge practical advantages for shooting hyperlapses compared to the R2S. It has manual control of aperture, which makes it much easier to expose without fiddling too much with ND filters of different strengths. Although, ND filters are obviously still needed for the correct amount of motion blur. It also has much longer battery life, which gives much more flexibility. With air 2 I could not get an hyperlapse of around 12 seconds with a frequency of shot higher than one shot every 3 seconds because of the shorter battery life. When selecting hyperlapse from the photo menu, we have a choice of the same four modes. Free, circle, course lock and waypoints. The settings in the first three modes are almost the same. After having chosen the mode, we must specify it in the bottom right of the screen if we want to save the individual shots, and if we prefer RAW or JPEG format. Of course, RAW is the one I suggest. Notice that the resolution of the auto-generated movie is now always 4K, instead of a choice between 4K and 1080p. In the window at the bottom in the middle, we specify first the frequency of shots. With improved battery life, we can now get 12 second hyperlapses using any frequency from 2 to 5 shots per second. I prefer to use 2 or 3 in hyperlapses with people, car, boats, and so on. While I tend to use 4 or 5 seconds when the movement comes mostly from the clouds, or in the case of sunsets or sunrises. Notice that the lowest frequency of shots is not available if the shutter speed chosen is too long, as the camera needs a bit more than a second to buffer the shot. As an example, if we choose a shutter speed of 1 second, the frequency of one photo every 2 seconds will not be available, we have to choose a slower shutter speed. Then we choose the desired length. In most cases I use 12 seconds, because it makes it easy to know how long the shooting time will be. It will take 10 minutes with a frequency of one shot every 2 seconds, 15 minutes every 3 seconds, and so on. Then we choose the speed of the movement of the drone during the hyperlapse. The minimum speed now is 0 0.1 meters per second, which is quite slow and enables hyperlapses with a subtle movement, which I like. A 
After hitting the red shutter button, the camera starts taking the chosen amount of shots at the specified interval. During the hyperlapse it is possible to hit the bottom to the right to increase the number of shots taken in order to have a final movie longer by one second. Hyperlapses are not available when using the zoom functionalities. Maybe this will be available later on after further firmware upgrades. This mode is the only one allowing the use of the two sticks of the remote controller to move the aircraft freely during the hyperlapse. It was useful in models before the R2S, but now Waypoint's mode is much more efficient for this kind of moves. The mode 3 is now to be used only when shooting time lapses. Basically, hyperlapses with a static point of view. In other words, with the drone overing. We simply set the interval of shots, the desired length, and we can hit the shutter. The program will stop after having shot the required number of photos. One thing to bear in mind is that when hovering, a drone tends to be shakier. While when moving forward or sideways, the momentum will severely reduce the drifting. Shooting static time lapse is a good way to test the stability of the drone while hovering. We have severe winds for several days, and as you can see, the aircraft is shaking a lot here. Even after stabilizing, the result is not acceptable. But the wind conditions were horrible, with gusts of 50 km per hour. Finally, the condition improved. And with lower winds, the drone is quite stable while hovering. No problem with the footage after stabilizing. Orbiting around the target is a very interesting move, especially when there are elements in different planes at several distances, thus creating a parallax effect. After having set the frequency of shot, the length of the movie and the speed, we have to select the target by drawing a box around it, then we choose the direction, clockwise or anticlockwise, and we can hit the shutter. In R2S it was possible to use the two sticks of the remote controller to get closer or farther away from the subject, or to ascend or descend, while the drone rotates around the target. The sticks are not effective anymore during a circle hyperlapse, but I don't see it as a loss, since this sort of move is better performed in the waypoints mode. Course lock is another very useful move. In the settings we specify the desired direction of flight before hitting the button lock direction. Then we can select the target and the camera will follow it regardless of the direction of flight. In other words, the direction of the camera is independent from the direction of flight. As for circle, we can only use this mode for hyperlapse at fixed altitude. This is by far the most useful, versatile and spectacular mode. In most cases, I use it with only two points, or at times three, because this is the way to achieve the smoothest result. Although many more points can be used for uh, surveys or other kind of missions. To set a point, we simply fly to the desired location, position the camera towards the target and click on the first empty frame to the left. A tiny picture of the target will appear and the position of the drone, the elevation and the angle of the camera will be stored in memory. Once we have set the different points, we are presented with a window similar to the one of the other modes. There is a normal sequence icon to the left. 
If we leave it as it is, the drone will fly to the first point to start the hyperlapse. If we click on it, it will change to inverted, and the hyperlapse will start from the last point, thus saving battery. We then specify the desired interval of shots, but we don't have the full choice for the length. The maximum length available is based upon the distance traveled during the mission. For a 12 second hyperlapse with an interval of 2 seconds, the drone has to travel at least 60 meters, which is 0.1 by 300 shot by 2 seconds. If the distance travel is longer, the speed will increase. Once we hit the shutter during the mission, the software will handle the smooth transition between each point. It is possible to retrieve a mission in order to use it again, but the proceeding is different from the one in the R2S. As I understand, it seems that each mission is automatically stored by default. If you want to retrieve it, we can tap on the tiny icon at the top left of the window. We can see a list of the different waypoint missions we have made, with the last one at the top, and we can click to reuse a specific one. Once all the shots for an hyperlapse have been taken, the drone will be busy for a few seconds, auto-generating the file of the short movie. We can see the progression in percentage below the shutter. In the memory disk, the file will be stored in the subfolder 100 media, while the files of each individual photo will be in the file hyperlapse. In previous models, I have never taken seriously the auto-generated file, but I must admit that in the Mavic 3, the short movie is really good, and this is good news for users who want to quickly share a hyperlapse to social media. The exposure is good, the images are very well stabilized, and the colors are nice. It is even possible to apply a decent amount of color grading. If you want to dig deeper into time-lapse or hyperlapses, you can watch my video about them by clicking on the link appearing now. Or on this other one, for all you need to know about the most important factor for a time-lapse, motion blur. In the description below you will find a link to all the gear I use for drone hyperlapses. Click on this link to watch my video about hyperlapses with the DJI R2S. And don't forget to hit the like button if you enjoyed this video.